recording groups and queues. After you've patched some fixtures, we're going to go to our layout one view, which on a new show would be the group position color and beam window. If you stored over that layout, you can make your own layout by simply opening the windows and recording to one of the layout buttons. You'll notice that Magic Queue gives us what we call auto groups and auto palettes. So for every different type of fixture you've patched, you now have a group for it. I've got a spot group, a wash group, and a dimmer group. You also have some basic palettes to get you started programming with. To make your own groups, you can simply select a group. Let's say my spots. Let's say I want to make a left and a right spot group. So I go to the view heads view and you can see your 10 spots. In the current mode we're in to multiple select fixtures, hold your shift key down on your keyboard and select your first five spots. When you're recording groups, the selection order is stored as well. So if you click in a random order, it will store in that order. If you click from left to right, when you select that group and run an effect over it, maybe a dimmer effect, it will play back in the order that your group is recorded. To store that as a group, we toggle back to the V groups window, we select record, and we select an empty group tile. That's now recorded a group for those five fixtures, as you can see. To label the group, set that, we call that spots left. And to make another group, and using a different method, we can use our keypad. So in the last video, we set the head numbers of our fixtures in the patch window. We set our spots to start head numbers 101 onwards. If I want to make a group for spots 106 to 110, I can go back here and use my keypad 106 through 110 at at selects those fixtures. They're now selected so I can go on and record a group. Record and select an empty group tile. Set that spots right and I've now got myself two groups recorded. Spots left and spots right. And you can use those two methods for storing any groups of fixtures. So we're now going to have a look at how you can record some cues for those fixtures. So let's go and select our spot group here. I'm going to press the locate button, which is found in the head control section here, on the top left of this block of six keys here. By pressing locate, that's done two things. It's located the fixtures and brought them into the programmer at their locate value. So locating a fixture defaults them. So you can see here in the visualizer, those fixtures are now open white, pointing straight down. So it's reset, pan and tilt 50-50. It's set the dimmer at full. It's taken out any color, gobo and so on, ready for you to start programming in a blank state from those fixtures. But most importantly, by locating the fixtures, you've now put every attribute of that fixture in the programmer. So every parameter of that fixture, it's dimmer, pan, tilt, color and so on, is now active in our programmer. You can view the contents of your programmer by opening your prog window here, and you can see exactly what's in your programmer. Magic Cube records by what's in the programmer only. We don't record the output of the console, we record the programmer. So I've now located those spots. If I press the record button, command line says select playback or window item. I select the playback and I've now recorded that cue, my first cue onto playback one. I want to make a change and now my next cue you don't have to clear the programmer every time if you don't want to between cues you could say change the color of my lights to red and again you can see that in your programmer record select and it's recorded my second cue on the playback let's change the color of the lights to green and again you could be clicking one of these palettes or you could use your encoders to mix your own color this time we're going to change the position we're going to go to position window and we're going to tilt the lights onto the back wall we're going to hit fan and we're going to spread them out a little bit, toggle off fan once you're done, record, select playback, and we've recorded our third cue on that playback. Now if I clear the programmer and run up the playback fader, you can now see I've got myself a three-step chase recorded, playing back as so through those three steps. To view your chase, double-click the select button or on the playback legend, and that opens up your queue stack window, and you can see your three queues. Again, you're in a different window, so your soft buttons around the screen show you now queue stack related functions. So you've got speed for your chase on your X encoder wheel. Speed it up, slow it down. The button here tells me you've got tap to time. So on a console, you can click the blue button or on the side of a screen here to tap the time and retime your chase. You've got other controls, so things like chase direction, chase type, and so on there. 
If you want to now turn this into a more theatrical style Q stack, you hit the Q timing button up on the top right here. So this is in your Q stack window by double clicking your select key or your S button. Top soft button over on the right hand side, Q timing has now converted that into a theatrical style Q list of cues. If you want to make it back a chase again, you simply hit the chase timing button. Once you've done that on your stack, any new cues that you record into that stack will also be in either chase or cue timing, depending on what you've selected. You don't need to come and change that every time you record a new cue. Now I've selected cue timing, I now use my play button or the go button to step through my cues in that stack. Inside the cue stack window, you can now add fade times for your cues. So I can add a two second fade time to each one of those cues like so. Now I mentioned Magic Cue is a programmer based console. We only record what's in the programmer. So at the moment, I've got a playback active, which is not in my programmer. It's just outputting from the console. And if I go and select my spots and I forget to press locate, which brings everything into the programmer, and I select another color, let's say magenta, if we look in our programmer, all you've got now is you've just got color. You've just got that cyan magenta yellow color mixing to make magenta and the various different values from that palette. You've not got the dimmer, pan, tilt, all of the other attributes in the programmer because you didn't press locate. So if I now go on and record a cue, let's say record Q4 on that playback, clear my programmer, and when I step through to Q4, you'll see here when I press Q4, my fixtures have gone off. The reason they've gone off is in normal live mode, Magic Q isn't tracking. So all I've recorded into Q4 is the spots in magenta. I've got no dimmer information or anything else, so hence the fixtures have now gone off in my visualizer. All I've done is set a color. So if I wanted to correct that, I would simply go select a group of lights. I could locate them, set them to magenta, set them into a position. Again, this time I'm gonna tilt them forward. I'm going to record another cue onto that playback. Clear my programmer, double click my select button, and I'm just going to play forward there to Q5. In the next video, we'll look at how you can edit cues without having to make new cues if you make a mistake.